Hi everyone, so I'm Anne Olivia. Um, I do website customer journey and I'm also a teacher and I teach game design students about marketing. And what I like to do is use whatever I know about game design in my marketing and website designing because I think that's how we're gonna make better user experience. And today I'm gonna do a talk that's called It's Not a Bug, It's Actually a Bias. And um, I wanna talk about how 2016 has been an interesting year, but something really great happened uh, um, for the company Apple, and because they finally managed to clear out a bug that was a persisting bug in their interfaces. Because five years ago, when Apple introduced Siri, it seemed we could ask it anything and it would respond with charm and humor. For example, you could ask it, we're gonna hide a body, and it would respond. However, because of a bug on the platform, Siri could not provide you with abortion clinics if you needed one. So that was a b bad bug. But finally, they fixed it. It took five years. Um, and the question I asked myself is, how did an int artificial intelligence get iffy about abortion? Well, first there is a context. We perceive algorithms as neutral robotic operators, but we are wrong. Computers have no emotion, no childhood trauma, or parental influence to steer them towards ignoring their own privilege and treat people differently because of gender, race, or religion. Algorithms and computers are supposed to be like Mr. Spock, factual, cold, and reasonable. We let them assess the likelihood of crime on a neighborhood, and which links are the most relevant and trustworthy. The problem is that processes and algorithms are the expression of principles and values we hold. In his book, Persuasive Games, Jan Bogost argues that the procedures in our games and programs are based, uh, the procedures in, um, sorry. <laughs> so he argues that the procedures in our games are based on our values and principles, and they're far from neutral. He calls the analysis of the meaning of procedures procedural rhetoric. For example, if you look at Sid Meier's Civilization, it teaches you a lot about what the game makers thought what made empires rise and fall. And if you look at Facebook, you can understand how that team feels about what friendship is. And Dominique Cardon, who is a sociologist, he wrote in 2015 an article about the political rule of algorithms. And he says, as soon as we open the black box of algorithms, we realize that the choices they make for us are questionable and should be discussed because they offer different vision of society. When we design digital products, we create procedures that are in our minds an accurate representation of the world. However, we infuse them with our principles and values, and those are at the core of every decisions we make. The consequence is that our experience of reality is embedded in our algorithms. As digital designers, we build procedures. We make many assumptions that are based on our own experience of the world. We are often blind to those assumptions and believe them to be universal. Facebook, for example, has a real name policy that will block people if they feel that they do not use a real name. The issue is that Facebook team is building a global tool with the limited experience of what real names are around the world and are putting themselves as an arbitrator of people's identities. Native Americans, drag kings and queens have had their account blocked and needed official documentation to reopen them. Algorithms are impacted by the people who make them and the people who use them. On July 5th, 2016, so a few days ago, Ubisoft published a gamer survey for their players. Has anyone heard of that? Okay. So, um, because gender is not an issue for Ubisoft at all, the first question they asked was, are you a male or a female? And then if you picked female, the survey would stop. And uh, so, of course, there was a, uh, a backlash. And um, what they said was, um, hi, whomever, you know, tweeted them. 
uh, and this is Cory Doctorow, by the way. Um, they say there was an error with the setup of the survey. It is now resolved and available to everyone. Apologies for any confusion. I like the term confusion. Um, so they didn't uh, test um, because they're not known for having bias. Um, and what that says about our biases as digital product designers is that when we are blind to it, as long as we don't own it, it will keep on happening. The second thing I want to talk about is grading. <laughs> and the monopoly of certain platforms, such as Uber or TripAdvisor, has given a lot of power to consumers who give feed feedback on their experience. However, the notation system does not take into account the damage one bad review, one angry commenter can have on a business. From social science, we know how irrational customers are about reviews. Most people will not review if they had a pleasant experience. And one bad review affects visitors way more than a good one. And still, we keep on creating services that put all comments, all grades on the same levels. Finally, we can talk about machine learning and how it depends heavily on its training set and historical bias. Machine learning algorithms have a tremendous amount of potential. They can adapt, they can recommend, they can discover information. But they are also very sensitive to their training sets and to the way people use them. In an episode of the show The Good Wife, that sadly aired its last season, uh, a search engine company is accused of diverting food traffic away from a prominently black neighborhood. Their defense argues that they are not responsible for the discriminatory consequences because the data is user-generated. The issue is not only present in works of fiction. Government agencies and researchers around the world are asking themselves how to deal with the black box nature of algorithms. In an article, um, for the Scottish people in the room, I'm sorry, I'm gonna maybe, it's gonna be bad. It's Burkhard Schaffer, professor of computational legal theory, and he says, what I'm much, much more worried about with machine learning is that we get a type of harm that is much less visible, much less quantifiable, and much less comfortable with our normal rules and procedures. Um, so the consequence is that we are blind to our own biases and the impacts are grave. We need to have a conversation on the societal impact of games, programs and procedures and the responsibility of the people building the tools to prevent foreseeable consequences. Machine learning sifts through a huge amount of data and it brings out the most relevant the problem is that the most relevant results are often the ones that, that contribute to our confirmation bias. Dominique Cardon, the French sociologist, he says, if people have monotonous behavior, if they have friends who have the same ideas and the same taste, if they always follow the same path, then the calculator will lock them in their regularity. If the user only listens to Beyoncé, he will only have Beyoncé which is not too bad. <laughs> An idea that keeps on popping up again and again about the Brexit vote is that the voters on one side never really met the, uh, the voters on the other side. I wonder how much the very comfortable filter bubble we now live in is responsible for this. Algorithms are black boxes built by biased people on historical biased data and enriched by current biased data. Uh, how can we stay aware of the alienating power of the digital products we make and build better pro products? And the solution I would like to give you is to think more like a game designer does. And <laughs> as game designer, I'm talking about the theoretical game designers uh, that we can find in books about game design. Um, and first thing, uh, your product exists solely for your players. Uh, as a game for a game designer, your product should always serve your users, taking into account their human limitation. If humans have biases, your product should take that into account. If you're a game designer and your players have physical 
limitation, you will take that, take that into account, sorry. Um, second thing is prepare for people to cheat, to hack, and to exploit loopholes. And as, game for, um, as Microsoft learned with their AI bot Tay, since then on hiatus, people on the internet have asocial behavior. This is a known fact in game design, and by planning for it, for it you might find very elegant solutions to the problems. And finally, prepare to be wrong. It's designed for failure, feedback loops, and learning curves. As we learn with research on implicit bias, we are all infused in our culture and social norms, and we are blind to our own biases. Therefore, you need to design a way to find bias, correct it, and learn from it. By acknowledging that we are biased designers, creating for biased users, and we can put in place tools to help us build a more inclusive world. Thank you.